is free code camp worth it? I came across an interesting video that I'm actually watching right now, and I will break this down with you live, and I'm going to have a lot of thoughts on it, and this gentleman uh, is also going to have lots of thoughts on it, so let's go. I have to be careful because what I'm going to say is it's extremely critical of free code camp, and it is critical um, of it, and, but I, I want to back it up. Um, so this... All right, so he's about to drop some critical facts on free code camp. Let's get into it. So there's a bit where he kind of rambles on for a while, but his point was that he took 45 students that were his through free code camp, and this is what he says their skills were like after he put his students through that course. So I want you to just hear it yourself. Uh, in my experience, for education tools suck. They totally suck. And they don't teach you actual skills. They teach you the theory or they get you to do a thing, but they, they didn't even know what index.html. I'm not even kidding my friends. My friends, I am not making this up. So that's pretty frustrating, but it makes sense. If you only learn on free code camp, you haven't even created a .html file. You don't know where it on your computer it goes. So those things I do agree with. Let's keep hearing him and then I'll share more of my thoughts later. Not none of these people, none of these people knew what to name the file. They didn't even know what the file was or where it would go or why is it ending with .html. They may have known one or two or three or the tags. That was in, this was in 2019. That was in 2019. Yep. It was set up to go do this and then do this and then do this and all of the online for education things like the gamified education and there's a bunch of, I'm not going to say there's a bunch of gamified education right now regarding these kinds of things and the thing I worry about the most um, is if someone's going to finish enough to do the thing another good example is Vim Adventures Vim Adventures teaches you how to win the game Vim so a couple of things I agree with him a couple of things I don't agree with him he kind of gives me like the professor who's like kind of isolated himself under a rock type of vibes like i understand his point of there's some parts i skipped but in the video he you know if you watch it yourself he talks about like kind of memorizing certain things and, and really understanding them so how does the structure of the html page work like the body and then the tags and where the head tag goes and script tag and um etc but there are parts where he's talking about gamification and I do think gamification is important and I do think those coding environments are important and Codecademy, you know, he, he takes a stab at Codecademy and he took a stab at free code camp. And my argument would be this, did it help more people than it hurt? That's one question. The other question is if these tools didn't exist, would there be more developers today or less developers today? That would be another question. And so when you look at it as a net, was it a net positive or a net negative? I would argue very strongly that it's a net positive. Now, is everybody coming out like ninja fucking warrior level developers, black belts out of this? No. And does that also make sense where he's like, they don't even know how to set up their own HTML files? Yes, most likely. But I'll also tell you this. Take somebody like my brother who has no interest in coding. If I started having him set up an HTML file and then he had a Windows computer versus a Mac computer versus a Chromebook and he couldn't follow the tutorial or whatever, if he's already scared of numbers and math stuff, and he's a very creative, smart person, by the way. I mean, he has been doing a very high paying job for a very long time in a creative sector. And, but, you know, programming is not really his cup of tea. So if I'm showing him that and he's doing that and he can't follow along, he will just quit. He will not want to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Like he will not want to code. Whereas when I put him on something like Code Academy, Free Code Camp, or, you know, any of these online for education tools that he, he's bashing on, he will just continuously write the thing that they're telling him. He'll make progress. He'll feel like he's moving forward. That gamification actually makes it fun. A uh, funny example, my ex-girlfriend was a pro boxer, a pro synchronized swimmer, and just like a uh, an athlete, an Olympic level athlete her whole life. Now, when I was teaching her coding, when I was trying to teach her normally, she was like, she hated that, right? But then I found this game called Code Combat. And Code Combat is basically, and how I got her into it was, I showed her Code Combat. And Code Combat is a game, it's a game, a video game based on with coding. And so, you know, if there's an enemy, you would say, if enemy, then attack. And so she would write that and then she would attack the enemy and she would pick her syntax, whether it was JavaScript or Python. So the difference would be in Python, she would use white spacing and indentation, whereas in JavaScript, she would do the semicolon and the close paren and open paren and squigglies. And 
she started actually picking up programming that way because she was just solving puzzles and it was fun. And she was starting to understand the logical part of how programming works. And then later we could slowly start, to, once her level of interest and excitement, hers or my brother's is increased, right? Take the average population. Not everybody's a hardcore wannabe programmer and just love everything about it. Once that starts to get increased, then you start to incrementally introduce more and more complexity. So like this guy is testing them for fucking wrong things. Like if you're coming off of purely the simulation world, like free code camp or whatever, of course you're not gonna know how to make a file on your computer because they've not done that. So what is he getting out of testing that? Of course you're not gonna know how to do that. Then you need an additional resource that then teaches you, hey, here's how you make a file on your computer. Here's how you do X, Y, Z. Um, and I also, I want to hear him out, but I also don't know what his like argument will be, but you know, just by feeling his vibe off of this video, I feel like his argument would be like, just shut everything out and, uh, you know, uh, live under a rock and just forget about these online simulations, memorize code, because that's what actually takes you to the next fucking level. I don't know. I'm going to hear him out, but I feel like if he had where I would be less pissed off because the reason why I'm pissed off is because like I want more people to learn and I want learning to become easier. It's because of professors like these that try to make it hard just for the sake of it being hard and make the experience more on memorization, which is a word that was used in the video. It took out the fun of coding for people like me. I didn't want to code for those reasons. I wanted to do it because it was fun. I was solving new problems and that was exciting. It wasn't because here's how you make an exact HTML file. And if you don't put .html and you put .hmtl, the file breaks. That stuff I learned later and I cared about all the technical stuff later. Using the command line to then make a file and touch a file and et cetera and whatnot. Learning how to use Vim. All those things I honestly cared about later once I discovered that programming was something even fun that I would I would even want to do. So I did learn from Coursera and Udacity and a lot of their platforms were just online education platforms and I did problem solve right within there, but I still improved my problem solving skills and I'm badass today at programming. But let's keep going. I wanna hear the gentleman out fully. In adventures, it doesn't teach you Vim. And the kids that had gone through Vim adventures did not know how to edit a file using Vim in the terminal. They had no idea because they never associated the act of editing a file with the keystrokes that we're having from Vim Adventures. And the idea, the idea, the hypothesis behind a thing like Vim Adventures is, oh, these kids are going to master all these really great, you know, command line things. The problem is, is that's not how your brain works. Your brain works by associating the task at hand with what you're seeing. That means you're looking at a terminal and you have a text file that needs to be edited. What are the commands? And then you're Okay. So some points of agreement that I want to say there. Yes, you're right. If you are not using Vim on your command line, you're not actually going to learn how to use it from playing that game. I understand that. That's a good point. But here's what I will tell you. The first time I was fascinated by Vim and that made me want to learn Vim was because somebody sat me down. I was at a co-working spot in Chicago. It's called Pumping Station 1, PS1. I don't know if it still exists today or not. Great co-working spot. And when I was there, there was somebody that met me and was like, yo, you should learn Vim. He was a senior developer. He's like, it's going to skyrocket your ability, et cetera. I thought, I thought that was freaking cool. I'm like, I want to learn it. So he brought me aside and he said, I want you to learn Vim, but check out this Vim Adventures, play it for a day, and then talk to me tomorrow. And I just played Vim Adventures for a day. And it was how to move my character with like a JKL um, and or JKL, sorry, like how to move my character and basically just moving up and down, left and right. And Vim has its own set of um, keys, right? How you move around. And um, I learned how to use move my character in that game. And once I did, I actually learned how to move around um, and got comfortable with those keys. Then when I moved to an actual uh, Visual Studio code, it didn't translate over perfectly, but one, I was already introduced to the concept of how to move up, down, left, and right without having to use arrows or something else. Uh, the second thing I was already introduced to was like the fun aspect of it. I was like, this is actually fun. I remember playing a game. So I had positive emotions associated with Vim. So before teaching and somebody learning something, they have to be sold on learning that thing. They have to actually want to do that thing. So the first step to learning is building a desire. You can't just start learning stuff that you don't have desire for. And if you do, it's a weak foundation. Eventually you'll quit and you won't want to do that thing.
Okay. So that's an important thing to understand. So when I'm learning Vim and Vim adventures while you're right, it doesn't translate over one-to-one. The first step you're actually doing with that is building the desire and the excitement for somebody. And then you move them over into the command line, the dark side of the, you know, the, the programming world. And then you, you sneak them in. It's kind of like if I was to introduce you to anime, I won't be like, bro, let's sit down and watch Parasite or some one of those crazy animes with like 15 freaking seasons, right? Code Geass with like nine seasons or whatnot. The first thing I would do is be like, let's watch uh, Death Note. You know, let's watch like one of those mainstream animes so you can just kind of get into it, Attack on Titans maybe. And then you start watching like the crazier stuff. So that's the way I think about it. Your fingers become associated with the movements and stuff to do that. And that is exactly the same thing for web development. If they had learned how to make a very simple web page, and if I had walked them through using VS Code or whatever to make an actual web page the same way an actual professional developer would do it, then they would be building on actual skills using real tools. And I cannot overstate how valuable that is. Because even if you learn the skill completely and you're doing it in the cloud, on some educational website, and you're not actually logging into a system where every single thing is the same, then the pneumatic path, the pneumatic path, Yes, that I agree with. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Okay, good. That I agree with. Yes, if you don't do it in Visual Studio Code at some point, you know, you have to switch over at some point. And if you're not doing it at any point, then yes, those pathways won't exist and you will be very confused when you actually go to the real world. So I 100% agree with that pathways in your brain the neural pathways and the pneumatic uh, mnemonic methods and stuff like that they're not going to work because your your brain is, is used to associating all of this stuff the entire experience it's not just about knowing how to do x and y command it's about having all the pieces be in sync so that when you are put in a similar situation things there are a couple of areas where i've seen it more productive than others for example um code combat uh nice okay we agree on the code combat one that was something i was talking about earlier so thank you for bringing that up Yes, it is effective on the code combat, and we are in agreement there. That's cool. That because they were doing coding and they added, you know, the actual syntax of the code that they were writing, um, you know, they got they got better at writing that syntax, but but they weren't solving real world problems. They were solving, you know, a problem to help them beat beat the the monster. So maybe they correct. That's true. Learn how to do recursion in a loop or something. But it wasn't as effective, in my opinion, had they been, you know, solving their own problems. I want to make uh, a story game. I want to make a, a something that accomplishes a particular goal of mine. And, and I agree with that too. Uh, if you associate it with your own problem, you will learn more, you will learn faster, and you will retain the knowledge way more because it will be emotionally connected. Now, with that said, playing it as a game is the next closest thing to that because on one end, you have a teacher handing you down a task and you have to do, and that's one extreme of like you're forced to do something. On the other end, you have the other extreme, which is you figuring out your own goal and your own desire. So these are two extremes, okay? Uh, the teacher extreme is like you're feeling like you're forced to do stuff, doesn't really feel good. And then your extreme is the one that feels the best because you feel like you're coming up with it. But it's really hard to come up with something. In between that is something that makes it fun. It feels like a game and you do it. So when you're playing heads up with your friends, Imagine how motivated you are or when you're playing charades or when you're playing something like draw something and one person draws and the other person guesses what that thing is. Even though it's not a thing you came up with yourself, you're very excited to play that game because of how that game works and it's giving you very interesting things to play off of. So you're very motivated. So I would say that it's better than learning in class because even if the game gives you a task like, hey, defeat this enemy, you're actually pretty motivated to defeat that enemy because you're like, that is kind of aligned with my goal. So it does build like an emotional connection, though the strongest one would be if you fully came up with your own problem to solve. And that just, it's just much more visceral. It's much more real. It just tends to stick better. So that's the end of the video, really. Um, I, it's not to throw Free Code Camp under the bus. I understand that they've changed a lot, but um, the takeaway was I sent 45 people through Free Code Camp and only two of them could build a website afterwards, a web page, and those two had already learned how to do it before that. That's the I don't know why you sound so defeated, bro, when you say that. And the reason why I say that is because they're not supposed to have learned that. Like, that is crazy. That's like, if I was like, okay, I want you to become a better fighter. And I'm like, but first you need to get your jabs right. So then I trained him. I took him. Let's say I, tr I, I take you, okay? Um, and I'm like, 
come on here. You can leave your hoodie on because you already look so badass, and I'm sure you're going to be good at fighting. I put a punching bag in front of you, and then I'm like, okay, throw your jab and throw your... So you start throwing your jabs, and you start throwing your hooks. I'm like, okay, cool. And I have you just train that for like two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then the next day, I just go, all right, son, uh, put on your gloves. I'm going to put on my gloves. Let's spar. Or I bring another fighter, and I go, okay, you guys just spar. Bro, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to get fucking knocked on your ass. You're going to gas out. You're not even going to last a minute, but are you going to be like, I didn't get better at boxing? No, but you just didn't train for that environment. So how do you expect to survive in the real environment? But also you need to hit the bags too, to actually improve your skill set, to improve how you fight. You can't not do bag work. And so when you're looking at free code camp and other online resources, they're very helpful because they strip away a lot of the sparring right because in sparring i gotta put my um the the i forget what what it's called but like the teeth thing we put right so you gotta protect your teeth you gotta put your headgear you gotta put your gloves you gotta wrap and you gotta like you gotta do all these things you gotta warm up beforehand you can get too tired so there's a lot of this extra stuff so when you're coding on your own environment you gotta set up your coding project you gotta set up your folder structures you gotta like set up Whereas, like, if you're like, dude, I just want to solve a particular problem, you free code cam and these, they just get you into the meat and potato of the problem. So think of that as like hitting the bags or improving in chess, for example, right? Like I play chess, I'm top 1% in chess and how I got good at it is by playing it, of course, and get, uh, and uh, feedback over my games. But I also got better because I do chess puzzles. And so chess puzzles are like somebody else's game I solve that situation and then I just move on. And sometimes it's not even somebody else's game. And that pattern recognition comes into my own games and it helps me. And then I can solve those tactics and like have a crushing combination that I can find because I, I had done all these tactics beforehand. That's how I think of like these online tools. They're like helping you solve these tactics and they might not carry over 100% to the full game, but these patterns do come into play. So testing them on how to make a file and how to set up a folder structure when they did that zero times because they did free code camp, I think is testing for the wrong thing. But once the file structure is set up and once they start coding and once there is stuff and they have to add stuff or remove stuff or change stuff, stuff that they have learned, I bet you that that will still kick in and they'll still be able to do those things. So those are just my thoughts. I thought it was very entertaining. I loved uh, everything you said. Um, even with the things I disagreed, I respectfully disagree and uh the things that i agreed you know um i 100 agree so you know if you watched it would love to even have a chat with you you know comment on it but yeah guys thank you so much for watching i appreciate you like the video subscribe to the channel and with that said i love your beautiful face this is kazi and i'll see you in the next video